Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Mike Lee Collin II, and with me as always via Zoom is... Is Matthew Malloy Haas. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, today on the show, we are covering short-lived sitcom called Malloy, starring future Jeopardy host Mayim Bialik, and the first television appearance of Jennifer Aniston. Um, so, uh, before we get started, though, Matt, I have a really weird concern I want to address with you. Oh, okay, sure, what's up? So... When I was a child, I remember on TV that uh, Smokey the Bear would come on and he would say, only you can prevent forest fires. And yeah. uh, so every year since then, there's been these forest fires in uh, California, and I've felt guilty ever since. Is it my fault? Because he was pointing right at me and saying that only I can prevent the forest fires. <clears throat> It's understandable. I mean, the reason why he was saying that is because, you know, the only way that you could prevent a forest fire is if you're the one that started it. So oh. he's like, basically saying like only you can prevent forest fires by not starting a forest fire. So, so, so it really wasn't just in the hands of an eight year old. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right, just making sure because I was really worried about that because I've been feeling guilty all these years. I mean, you know, it's, you know, yeah, you don't have to feel guilty. I mean, it's, it's nice that you, you know, have a conscience that you would feel not not guilty necessarily, but just have that kind of way on your conscience, you know, shows that you know, you actually have a heart and, you know, care about things and, you know. That's that's a good you know that's a good uh, edit to have, mm-hmm. and I do have a heart, and you know, you know, mm-hmm. home, home is where the heart is, and mine's in the freezer. What? Oh, I'm sorry, we're not <laughs> talking about that. Anyway, so <laughs> back to the topic at hand, folks. Um, so um, Malloy, interesting yeah. show. Um, directed this episode, the pilot episode that we're covering was directed by John Tracy. It was uh, written by George Beckerman and Stu Kreisman. Uh, this originally aired in 1990. On in July of 1990, the show itself, they filmed seven episodes, two of which were unaired. Hmm. Um, interesting uh, little story here. This okay, so um, this was a uh, okay. Uh, Mayim Bialik had built a budding career in TV and film since the age of nine. Um, she was uh, vigorously sought after as a TV series lead after her widely praised performance in the movie Beaches in 1988, <laughs> uh, where she played Bette Midler's uh, childhood. Uh, self in flashbacks um so during the 89 90 tv season um she committed to two pilots one for nbc called blossom (laughs) and one for fox called malloy um the two projects were in competition with each other basically and uh so what ended up happening was um they ended up airing both of them (laughs) oh wow yeah um the two projects, um, they, uh, Mamoy went into production first with a seven episode order commissioned by Fox. Um, after, uh, these seven were completed, Bialik then shot the original pilot for Blossom, which NBC was going to air as a comedy special that summer. 
On uh, July 5th, two weeks before Fox premiere in Malloy, NBC aired Blossom and uh, <laughs> to, uh, to really high ratings. Uh, with both uh, projects riding on each other's misfortune for survival, it was up to Fox's, uh, the Fox series to do well, which unfortunately it didn't. So after some lackluster ratings, um, Fox canceled it with uh, two unaired episodes. And so uh, then Blossom went into production, and it ran for five seasons. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. History about that. Wow. Yeah. So I thought that was an interesting backstory here to this to the to this show. Um, I also think it's interesting that the character of Malloy and Blossom were basically very similar, um, <laughs> in a lot of ways. So, uh, what happens in this episode here, Matt? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, about that really quick. Uh, I would, I probably would have watched Malloy, um, if that were on, because I was like probably nine or ten. I think Blossom was kind of meant more for like teenagers, kind of, uh, yeah. like, like young teenagers going into like late teens, because it was on for, you know, five seasons, but like, Malloy was probably more of like my speed during that time, but uh, yeah, yeah. So what happens is is um, Malloy lives with like kind of like uh, you know sort sort of upper middle class parents. Both of them have like kind of like corporate jobs, you know, always on the phone with clients or whatever. You know, really really busy kind of family. Um, you know, her younger brother is like listening to headphones uh, at breakfast because he's like studying something or whatever. So it's like a really busy kind of family structure that don't, you know, seems like they don't really, you know, spend a lot of uh, quality time with each other because they're, you know, they're so busy with work and school or whatnot. And um, she, uh, everyone, I guess, kind of treats her with kid gloves. Like she, she can't seem to get in trouble. She mentioned like, like no matter what she does, they just kind of, you know, treat her really uh, gingerly. And uh, her her dad, um, you know, tells her to you know make sure that she's home at you know six p.m. Uh, that night for like a surprise. And uh, it, it turns out that it's, it's her birthday, so you know she's thinking that he's throwing her like a surprise party, but he wants her to kind of know that it's going to happen, you know, to make sure that she actually shows up or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so what else happens after that? Well, um, we, we see Malloy at her job. <laughs> she is. A, yeah. She, she's a she's a, a, a actress on a show that kind of seems like a Barney type show. You know, like a kid's show where. Uh, mm -hmm. Where uh, there's a guy dressed up. What was he dressed up as? It was like a. Uh, I think it was like, like, a, like a squirrel, squirrel or something. I couldn't really tell what it was. Yes, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, but underneath it was like this uh, this kind of pretentious British kind of guy, <laughs> um, who was uh, who was um, who was like basically kind of a stuck up sort of you know I'm a. I'm a uh, high flute actor, but I shouldn't be playing a freaking costume character on a TV show. And, right. Uh, and so then she has she has some co-stars. One played by an actor with my one of my favorite names ever, Bumper Robinson. <laughs> yes. Who would later go on to be actually a series regular on the TV show Amen. With a. Uh, with uh, George Jefferson himself, uh, shoot, what's what was that actor's name? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, um, Sherman Hemsley, that's who it is. And um, <laughs> yes, that's what I thought it was. I was just blanking. But yeah, Bumper Robinson, um, he's still acting to this day. He uh, he does a lot of uh, voiceover work. Um. It's a really uh, prolific actor. Um, but yeah, he was a... Like I said, he was a regular on Amen for a while. Which I really mm. like. I liked that show when it was on. With Sherman Hemsley and... Uh, 
my Facebook friend Roz Ryan was a regular on there. Um, <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> they uh, there's also another co-star and everything, and they're talking about you know her birthday. They give her a gift. The one the one co-star is kind of a airhead who basically just says what's in the gift before she opens it. <laughs> and it was a sweater and a scarf. And um yeah, and so she's excited because she thinks she's going to have a uh surprise party. Also the, the thing we forgot to mention before is the fact that the reason she's living there with her her dad and her step family is because her mom passed away. Mm-hmm. So her dad was just a like a weekend dad before that after their divorce. And uh which I found interesting because the premise of Blossom was that she was living with her dad and her brothers after her mom passed away when she was really young. Oh. So yeah, it's just kind of funny that she was playing two characters that <clears throat> But actually I think that was more she thought her mom passed away, but her mom ended up actually have just left them and it was just yeah, anyways, I'm pretty sure or she just left them, I can't remember. But either way it was a story about a kid without a mom. So <clears throat> um also, um, yeah, so, so, so she gets home, and she's all excited, thinking that they're going to have a surprise party for her birthday. Turns out that instead, the big surprise that they were talking about is that the, the family had bought a brand new car. <laughs> was it a Ferrari? No, it was a Mercedes. Mercedes, Mercedes, there we go, that's what it was, I was trying to remember. Yeah, it was a Mercedes that they bought, and, uh, yeah, and course you've got the uh the um kind of a spoiled uh older stepsister played by jennifer aniston here and uh got like a kind of a nerdy younger brother there too but anyways they come home she's all pissed off basically they all forgot her birthday (laughs) and uh so then the next day um she uh She's all pissed and doesn't really... She, she ends up not explaining things to her dad and basically says, you know... He says, what did I do? And she's like, you did nothing. You know, <laughs> they're all upset. Um, so then she ends up going off to school. Uh, do you want to take a quick break here, Matt, and then we'll talk about the rest of the episode? Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll do that really quick. So um, here's a word from our sponsors, folks, and we'll be right back. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there and we are back talking about a sitcom with the preferred um recently announced uh, Jeopardy host as opposed to the one who had to step down because of racist and misogynistic comments he made in the past. Um, so anyways, um, so <laughs> why, why is it, sorry, I don't want to, I don't mean to yeah. go on, but why, why do, why does anyone think that if you say or do something on the internet that it's, it's ever going to completely go away? Like, like it's always like, even if one person downloads the podcast, 
it's that's still one person who has yeah. the access, you know. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, everything's forever. I mean, you gotta. Just yeah, be it careful. is. I mean, the the only issue I have right now with this with with the, with uh with Mike Richards, um, he's stepping down as the host, but he's still going to be the executive producer of the show. Yeah, it's so, weird. So it's like it's all optics, is all it is. It's not even. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, he should be stepping down from everything if 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 he really feels bad and then reevaluate things and start. I don't want him to lose his career or anything, but still, you know what I mean. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I know. It's just, it's kind of kind of weird, but it's kind of also funny that uh, that anybody named Mike Richards or Michael Richards is you know gets in trouble for being racist. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, in my opinion, if your name is Mike or Michael Richards out there, you might want to change your name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cause, cause that's how it works, right? It's all based <laughs> on somebody's name. Um, anyway, so, uh, uh yeah. yeah. So what <laughs> else, what else happens in this episode here, Matt? <clears throat> um, let's see here. Uh, oh yeah. Well, she, um, she, uh, the next day, like when she just kind of tells her dad to, you know, just like, you know, like, like just get out of my life or whatever type of thing else. She just slams the door at him. She, um, decides to basically have like a, like a day, you know, out in town, you know, with her, with her colleagues slash friends from the show that she was on. And they're, you know, talking about how much money they can, you know, grudge up or whatever to, you know, get some candy or whatever. They're going to the pier, which I assume is the Santa Monica pier, which I've been to, but anyways, yeah. So, I like to go there eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So they, you know, and the one kid's like, the one kid who's like worried about money. Then it turns out that he had a hundred dollar bill the whole time. It's like I just don't want to crack this one hundred. It's like wow. It's like that's, that's really nice of you. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, and uh, so she's gone, you know, pretty much all day. Yeah. Yeah, and her, uh, her, her parents figure out that she, uh, her dad and her stepmom figure out through uh the the stepdaughter that um her stepsister what do you want to call her um jennifer aniston's character that it was her birthday yesterday and they all forgot so they they plan a new surprise party and they put that together but she was gone all day and never showed up to her own party and everybody basically had left um so then she gets home and uh there's all these presents for her, and uh, what ends up happening is uh, they they have their nice little family moment where they decide that uh, they're going to be, uh, be a family because, you know, everything's good. But after going through the, the whole, uh, you know, apologizing to each other, and she's basically getting in trouble because she spent the whole day at the pier. Um, the, finds out the reason that she went to the pier is because the previous year, when her mom was still alive, her mom took her there for her birthday. So it was kind of kind of sad in that way. Yeah. But you know, her stepmom basically tells her, you know, I'm not your real mom, but you know, I'm hoping to be a close second. And you know, it's kind of a touching moment. And then they end up fighting with each other, but in a way that's basically proving that they're family. You know. Yeah. Like she's actually be happy to be in trouble because that proves that they are paying attention to her and actually care about her. Because I, I remember someone said something once. I forgot. I forgot if it was a movie or or a documentary. I don't remember what, but basically it was like on, 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 ugh, along the lines of actually the worst. The worst thing you can experience is not like when your friends or family like yell at you. It's like when they just don't say anything at all. Cause they just completely given up on you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <clears throat> basically it, it's, it's, oh, it's kind of like, it's better to yeah. be yelled at than to be ignored at all, ignored altogether, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, Jennifer Aniston's in the background saying, I can't take all of this, um, this, this sentimentality or whatever. So, yeah. 
Um, what uh, yeah. So so how's how's everything end then? Uh, I think it ends with her. Um, well, yeah, they they uh, send her to her room, but then they give her some um, birthday cake to <clears throat> you know eat eat in her room while she's being grounded or whatever. And uh, I think that's. I think that's how. And oh, by the way, the British dude was at the party, and he was like oh, apparently yeah. being really irritating, I guess, to yeah. them or something. And he was like eating all the food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, he's a big guy, so you know they needed to write in the jokes about him eating a lot because. Oh, of course. Back, I mean, yeah. Back you, in the eighties and nineties, anytime a big person was on TV, you had to make fun of their weight. Um, oh yeah. So, <laughs> of course. Yes. <laughs> comedy um so (laughs) the uh because you can't have like you know any major character development you just got to talk about the way they look anyway so um so (laughs) sorry (laughs) but um so the uh i don't know you want to take another break here matt i know it was really quick um but we'll take another break here and then we'll talk about some uh trivia and some reviews for this uh for this show and then uh our final thoughts Sure. Sorry, we'll be right back, folks. Yep. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there and we are back um, so, okay, Matt, here's a little bit of trivia here. Like I said before, this is Jennifer Aniston's first uh, television appearance. Um, so, uh, yeah, her dad had been an actor for years before that. Um, little known fact about Jennifer Aniston is her, uh, her godfather was Telly Savalas. So, um, yeah, just because her dad was best friends with telly savalas and her dad was john aniston from the tv show days of our lives so um, yeah so uh this is just random facts i have stuck in my head um (laughs) so uh the um the series theme song was a cover of accentuate the positive performed in an upbeat jazz style by dr john after seven episodes of malloy were produced john was then hired to perform the theme song for bialik's other proposed project blossom so he performed the theme song for both of her sitcoms. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I'm sure if he was still alive, he would have performed uh, the for her latest show that she plays like a veterinarian in or whatever. I haven't watched it and probably won't because I, I've been I've I, I've been kind of soured on my Bialik only for the mere fact that she starred on Big Bang Theory for years. <laughs> Come on! I know I can't just hold watched. that against her. I surely shouldn't. <laughs> it was a you know it was a job you know <laughs> she I'm, I'm, probably had yeah I'm, I'm fine with that I mean and, and I and I'm fine with her being the uh, the um the host of Jeopardy um that, that's fine with me too she's better than Mike Richards um 
but I really want I really want to see LeVar Burton be the main host. So. Yeah, me too. That's yeah. that's the one I want. The guy, you know. But, but but then again, I haven't watched an episode of Jeopardy in years, so I don't really care either, either way. It's not like it's going to affect my life one way or the other. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I know. So yeah, the um. So basically, this show ran four episodes <laughs> from July twenty fifth till August fifteenth of nineteen ninety. That's. <laughs> So it's literally ended like 31 years ago, like almost to the day, yeah, like basically five, six or five days, you know, you know, difference, but <clears throat> yeah, 31 years ago. Wow. And, uh, so we have one, one user review on the internet movie database and that's it. Wow. <laughs> this is from Jason LC. Um, back in January 25th. 5th of 2006 and his uh, headline has never made it to air even though it did but whatever <clears throat> he says I was in Hollywood California Universal Studios my senior year and we were approached to be in the audience for a new show of course we did it um, thought it would be cool to be part of the studio audience I recognized Mayim from Beaches and in the audience was uh, Janice from the TV show Head of the Class um I took pictures with my disposable camera and none of them turned out. I wish they would have because it was uh, none other than uh, Jennifer Aniston playing her big sister. Uh, the <laughs> show's premise was uh, Mayim's character lived with her mom. Dad was off with a new family and she shows up on the doorstep one day to live with her daddy. I think mom went to jail or something. See, she's to they're totally missing the point of the show. Um, and now, uh, she has an older s stepsister and younger half brother. Um, it looked like it would have, uh, been a, uh, cute show. Not sure why it never made it, but shortly after Blossom appeared and I loved that show and who knows what would have become of friends. <laughs> yeah. See, and this is the second, um, short lived series that we have covered featuring Jennifer Aniston too, because we had also covered yeah. Ferris Bueller. B -b -b Bueller. Anyway, so um, the Bueller. Yeah, so, Bueller. Uh, yeah, and um, they uh, that so it's hard to say if either one of those shows had taken off if she would have ever ended up on Friends. So we could live in an alternate universe where there was no Blossom and there was no Friends. Wow. And I, for one, do not want to live in that world. Eh. Actually, I mean, probably wouldn't have affected my life one way or the other. Anyway, so um, <laughs> Friends was okay, but you know, know, like it was the greatest show ever. But <laughs> I used to love Blossom because I had a had a crush on her at the time for some reason. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, the um, I don't know. Uh, so, what did you think of this uh, pilot? Do you think this show could have lasted if it would have been given a chance? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I really, really liked it, and I, I don't know if I was just in, like, a weird headspace last night when I watched it. I watched it on my phone, actually, when I was eating, like, a bowl of oatmeal <laughs> before going to bed, which, you know, not really supposed to eat before going to bed, but hey, whatever. And um, so I'm just sitting there, you know, at the table, you know, pretty much all the lights are turned off. I just got my phone there. I'm just sitting there watching it, you know, and um, I don't know, I, I just think... Um, you know, like I was probably maybe seven or eight years old when this show came out. So, like, I, I think it would have been even then, it may have been a little bit too old for me, but not not really that that much, you know. But like, I could totally see myself at that time probably watching it every week, you know, when it came out. So, yes, and uh, I, I liked it, but I'm glad Blossom went instead because if blossom wouldn't have got gone we would never have joey lawrence's whoa and um exactly and, whoa into pop culture so you know <laughs> yeah and about yeah because that, that was the, like the peak of you know and then, pop culture right there and i'm whoa. still i'm still holding out hope for the for the joey lawrence owen <laughs> wilson tv series called whoa and wow wow and, um where it would just whoa be, well, Wow, whoa, wow, wow, whoa, wow, whoa, and then that would be the whole sitcom. And yeah, that would be the whole thing. Yeah, it's going to be the greatest then, uh, ever. 
I'm gonna then you can like, TV to the Hollywood. <laughs> yep. Yep, and then you can bring in Melissa Joan Hart into the mix for the Toledo show that they were in. Um, yeah, the Melissa and Joey show. Yeah, the Melissa and Joey, and then she could go on, on like rants about how like you know you're not a good person if you're not a Christian or whatever. And then Joey can go like, "Whoa, did you say that? Whoa!" Owen Wells be like, "Wow!" And then did the greatest thing ever. Which just gave, which just kind of messed for a second though. It just made me think of something though. Like with Loki, because you know he was in Loki, obviously. Um, I just like thought about something really quick. So like we're dealing with like alternate timelines and different realities, right? Yeah. So does that mean there is like different versions of like the same like prophets, like Jesus and Moses and Muhammad, like different <laughs> versions of the same? I mean, that's that's an interesting thought right there. Um, kind of a deep thought for the show we just reviewed. But there, like, might be, uh, there might be a different version of the prophets in the uh, worlds where uh, we didn't have friends or blossom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 yes, that that's that that'd be interesting. Um, so any, any other final thoughts here on the show, Matt? Uh, not really. Just well, um. If you want to look really, really cool, you got to get the sweater that that dad was wearing on the first scene of the show. Oh, yeah. And you got got to get one of those phones, too, with the cords. Like, Mm -hmm. go old school with cell phones, man, or cordless phones. Like, throw away your iPhones, your Samsungs, you know, whatever. Um, Go get yourself a um, a cordless phone. (laughs) If you're going to go cellular, do... So, like, the Nets on Netflix right now with Sandra Bullock, you know, in that, that movie? Yeah. In the first scene, I think, is this guy, he's talking to, like, his someone, and he's, like, has, like, one of those old school cell phones where you actually have an antenna. Yeah. And he, like, you know, it's done. He got shut the antenna into his phone, then he puts the phone, like, in his coat pocket, because, like, the phone's too big to even fit, like, in his pants pocket, because, like, that was <laughs> So it's like you literally have to have like a pocket for your phone just to fit in. And I was like, oh my God, like this was like, like this was peak civilization right there. Like we didn't need anything else really at that point. Like that could have, technology when it came to like phones and internet really could have just ended in like 1995. Like it would have been fine. Like there was no yeah. need for anything else. But anyway, and then he ends up telling him stuff a few minutes later. But you know, Movie, it's like, but that's, it's, it's, that's it's funny cool. that you mentioned that because like I was at a, my sister's birthday party the other day and I was talking to a guy about the that we were randomly talking about the net and how it uh you know how the technology in it is so weird now because how much it's advanced since that movie came out. It it really has. I mean, I remember watching it just like last night. I watched part of it and um. And how she actually orders pizza online. I remember when I first saw that, I saw that was the coolest thing ever. I'm like, I'm like, she's actually ordering pizza online, like from where? Like, I don't know any place that lets you do that. Like, it was like pizza.net. I'm like, okay, wait a minute though. That pizza.net is just so like, how did, how do they, do they call up the pizza stores themselves and make, do the order on on the person's behalf. Like, how does that even work? This you know, was, this was like, but, um, this was like but, Grubhub or DoorDash or something before it existed. You know, like way before like nineteen ninety five. Yeah. I don't think you could order pizza online unless like maybe if you lived like in a really big city, maybe there was a few places that let you do that. But I can't, I can't imagine that that was a normal thing at all to be able to do that. But yeah, uh, but she got a pizza, you know, anchovies and whatever top you know, other topping she got on there. And, um, you know, it looks pretty disgusting. I've had anchovies on pizza. Not that great. Anchovies themselves, not that bad. Salty, but, you know, salty fish, what's wrong with that? Put it on pizza, mm, I just took it off the pizza and just ate it the, and then took a bite of I'm not sure why I'm even talking about this. But well, um, The important question since we brought up pizza is pineapple on pizza or no? I, I like pineapple on pizza a lot. With, with pepperoni, um... Um, yeah, with pepperoni, I like it maybe by itself with just cheese. Mm, okay. I used to like it with mushrooms, but then I'm like, nah, I don't like that combo anymore. But yeah, definitely with pepperoni, I like the, I like, I just like the sweet, fruity flavor that goes, you know, with the, 
the cheese and, and the sauce. I just like it. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of the, well, that's the okay. pineapple on pizza. Um, you don't have to be. But, you know, and, and plus, <laughs> I, I, I don't like being lied to by uh, by by pizza places when they say something's called Hawaiian pizza, even though it was created in Canada. <laughs> Is there a reason why they called it Hawaiian? Like, I mean, what, what's it was, the... It was, it was mainly because of the pineapple was popular in Hawaii, and they... Well, that's they eat roasted okay. Egg and stuff, so you got the pork and the pineapple and stuff. So they, you know, figured it was a Hawaiian sort of delicacy to put that on um, food. That yeah. almost seems kind of racist a little bit. <laughs> like, uh, like oh, yeah, maybe. pineapple Hawaii. They got pineapples there. Ugh. Like, yeah, pineapples kind of grow. I think more than just places than Hawaii, like. And you know, um, at pretty one time, too- pineapples were like almost used as currency. Really? Wow! Yeah, no, they they because pineapples were so rare. It was actually a, a sign of um of like uh of affluence, basically. If you had pineapples, so wow, that's yeah. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So there's some <laughs> randomness, um, folks. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, so anyways, um, make sure uh you folks follow us on uh. On our social media, our social meds, like the the book and the the twits and the uh, <laughs> and the grams, um, you can check out our Cullen Park page there. Also, you can um, go to all2real2 dot com, check out stuff there. Go to our T Public and our Patreon. We got those listed in the in the show notes. Also, be sure to uh, you know. Spread the word, and um, you can also join our Facebook group, the All Too Real Two Podcast Group. Um, it's a fun place to talk about things, and if you have any suggestions for future sitcoms we can cover, or any topic you'd like to hear us cover on here, you can uh, just let us know. And or if not that way, you can also send me a message at mike at cullenpark dot com. Yep. Um, anyways. Um, be safe out there, people. You know, if you have to, wear a mask. Also, wear a condom. Bye bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to All Too Real Two podcast, a Cullen Park production, produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com. Two, two, two.